show you something that might speed you up as far as your vectorization goes. A very manual vectorization of things is to put the scan in there and then trace over it. Everybody who has done cartography, especially an illustrator, has had to do that at certain times. I've traced over a whole bunch of USGS topographic maps and basically redrawn them because those are just scans, raster scans of a USGS topographic map. We had to resize it, we had to adjust it because it was a scan. We were getting pixels in the topographic map. That was no good, so part of the cartography was to actually redraw large chunks of topographic maps. And I have done a lot of that when I was working as a cartographer. So you may have to do that, and that's just time consuming, but the fin finished result is fantastic. You don't have some kind of grainy pixelated scan. You've got a very clean, vectorized, scalable drawing of the area that you're trying to work in, your area of interest. There are now uh, different algorithms to automate the vectorization of different stuff. Let me create a new layer for another hand that I'm going to put in, another hand-drawn map. This is just a JPEG again. I just have this JPEG of this particular area. I'm going to put it in. I'm not going to worry about aligning it. Let me just turn off the area here in the water and put in some arrows for who knows what it is that they designate. Since I already have the line work in my Illustrator file, I could go through and align that just like I had done earlier. But I want to just show you that this is just a JPEG. This is just a JPEG that's sitting there. But I did get this menu up here. This is my Live Trace menu. Uh, these are some relatively new. Older versions of Illustrator won't have it, but uh, the newer versions do. They've been developing some algorithms to take a JPEG like this and convert it into a raster file. Sometimes the algorithm to do it isn't great. They're still working on it. That's why if you really want it done right, you're still going to have to draw it yourself. But there may be certain circumstances where using the algorithms to create a vector file may work fine for you. Or maybe you start with the algorithms and then revise it. Just as an example, I'm going to go here. I've, I've got my JPEG selected, and I've got Image Trace right here. And they've got a couple of different options, or actually more than a couple. They've got a few different options here for how I would like to try to trace over that. And uh, just for the heck of it, I will say, hey, make a 16-color vectorized art of this. I'm going to click this, the 6-color. I don't have that many colors on there. Six colors. May proceed slowly using this. Okay, that's fine. I think it was a rel relatively high resolution scan when I scanned it. I had my scanner left on whatever it was the last time I'd scanned something. I still probably will have to ungroup. Yep. So this right here, I bet I can delete. All right, all that white I can delete. See, it doesn't exactly know let me just show you that probably if I were, well, I know for a fact that if I were doing this by hand, I would make this a line with a thickness, but it makes it into a polygon, you see? So, I mean, it looks like a line of whatever thickness the scan was, but it's not actually understanding it as a line with a certain thickness of stroke. It understands that as a polygon with no stroke and the fill of that color that it was that it picked up on the scan. You can see that it looks like I've got all these little teeny tiny things to clean up. Those are just... Let's look down here at this shape. I've got a blue... Oh, that did pretty well. That just gave me that blue outline. So if I really needed that, I don't have to trace over it. I can get exactly what it looks like. You can see... See, there is the... What was sort of the stroke of the pen that I drew with right there. I would probably delete that. I would get rid of all of this stuff. And you'd see I'd much rather have a stroke put on this. Black stroke or whatever. Now you see I've got a black stroke here and I'd probably still want to go and clean up with a smooth tool or my pen tool. I don't know if I've actually shown you the smooth tool yet. I would probably want to smooth this out. The smooth tool has different options for different levels of smoothing. And help out this line but this probably does move a little bit faster. Whoop. And again, use that very pretty clean. It did a good job. That was only highlighter that I had filled that in with. But it came through here and picked that up as that particular color green. I can now change up the color green, of course. If I don't want it that color, I can make it 
Well, I can make it purple if I wanted to and put a stroke around it. Color vectorization with all the default settings. So there are other default settings settings that I could change and maybe I would get better lines. Automated vectorization are getting better and better. So I just wanted to let you know that they are there in case you have to do that kind of work with your map. You may want to take advantage of it. So remember that. Let me also just show you very quickly that if I want to put in a photograph it would be the same way. We go to File Place. I pulled in this JPEG of this scuba diver. I just got it off of Wikipedia. I can certainly drop it in. You might want a photo like this if you're doing some kind of dive map or something. I don't know. You can want all kinds of photos. But caution, caution, caution. I just pulled this off the web, so it's probably not a high resolution JPEG. It's a JPEG anyway, which means it uses lossy compression. So it's probably not a great idea to use a JPEG on your map anyway. Use a TIFF, something that doesn't compress and lose information. But this is probably just a web resolution anyway, probably 72 DPI. That makes it nice and small. Very, it loads very quickly on web pages. You'd never tell that it was low resolution on the screen because screens aren't that high resolution anyway, even though we're getting to higher and higher resolution monitors. All of the hard work making a fantastic vectorized map and then put in your pictures, have some really lousy JPEGs that are stretched out and pixelated. It will look terribly unprofessional, very amateurish. You don't want that. Ruin the entire effect of a map and yet you see it all the time. You see it all the time because people don't know. So please make sure that if you're using any kind of raster, I'll emphasize again, that it's a high resolution, lossless raster. All right, well, that's that. I hope that's very useful to you. It's an extremely useful technique and something you should definitely know. See you next lesson, we'll be moving on.